Winter is a lively time on the California coast, where migrating monarch butterflies make their annual return. The event brings volunteer researchers like Mia Munro to overwintering sites from Baja to Mendocino in search of this iconic butterfly. I have seen monarchs clustering in the cypress for years. Sometimes there's tens of thousands. Even just a little flicker of a wing could be a helpful giveaway sign. My name is Mia Monroe, so I kind of am drawn to M things. Monarchs, migration, metamorphosis. There's just something about this touch of the other world and this chance to appreciate something that's just kind of coexisting in my world. They're generally born in late summer, August or September, in Oregon, Washington, Northern California, and then they use the cues of the sun, the wind, and topography to return to these places. Back in the day, you would just see orange all over those trees. The good news is that you are part of the Western Monarch Thanksgiving Count, celebrating 25 years of community science. The bad news is the site we're going to, which has normally hosted thousands of monarchs, again, third year in a row has very few to no monarchs. In Northern California, we have not seen a single cluster anywhere. So our plan for today is we're gonna walk a short distance to our first site. Okay, let's go. I first visited in maybe the early 1980s, and that led to 25 years ago setting up the Western Monarch Thanksgiving Count. And so I was part of a group of people that got this count going, and we realized that this was a great opportunity for what we now call community science. That's trained volunteers that follow protocol, a way of doing things. So protocol tells you when, it tells you how to count, how to record data, what other information to get. So that means it's standard across the state and across time. Yeah, I just thought of one. Oh, good. Yeah, there it is. Where'd you see it? There it is. It's by the telephone post. There it is. Oh, yeah. All right. Right on cue. When the Western Monarch Count started 25 years ago, we were already noticing decline. The 2018 monarch count dropped below 30,000, revealing the species had entered an extinction vortex, a state where extinction is inevitable unless extraordinary measures are taken. From millions to less than 2,000 in the whole state. In December 2020, U.S. Fish and Wildlife announced that monarchs are worthy of endangered status but no actions were taken because of limited resources and other higher priority species. The last few years have been very, very discouraging, very, very few monarchs. So it's kind of uh, our own existential crises, what's happening to the world by watching the species that we're studying in such precipitous decline. Oh, and there's one up on the edge there. Now you can see the challenges of counting. Did we just double count those five or was it really four? You know. Researchers point to many factors that have contributed to the monarch's decline, including pesticide use, drought, wildfire, and habitat loss. As you can hear, PG&E is working nearby because we have power lines going through here. Like everywhere in California, hazard tree removal is the name of the game. And so this is one of the crises. I have faced this so many times where there are PG&E lines next to overwintering sites. I was here just a few years ago when there were 10,000 to 14,000 monarchs. So I am so scared because this site may lose its value for monarchs in the future. This is what's going on up and down the state from Mendocino to Baja in the coast. This is what's happening and why we're losing sites all the time. 
this is one of the things that we have to help the coastal communities do better. Despite all of the recent bad news, the 2021 monarch count actually brought a surprising change. Initial results are in and the western monarch butterfly is making a comeback. Butterfly lovers are all a flutter over the return of the magnificent migrating monarch butterflies. This year things are already looking up. They're back in much greater numbers at hundreds of overwintering sites. There are now promising signs of an uptick in numbers. This year when monarchs started coming back in the core area, there was literally a moment at Pismo and Natural Bridges when it was 2,000, 10,000, 18,000, 25,000. Are we going to get to 30,000 and out of the extinction vortex? It is an uptick in the central core part of the range, Santa Cruz to Ventura, which is south of here. The monarchs are seeing an uptick. Very, very hopeful and exciting to see. The bad news is that the uptick in monarchs is not happening in Northern California. That San Mateo, San Francisco, Marin, Sonoma, the numbers are as low as they have been. I don't really know why the uptick is there rather than here. It could be a, a micro temperature thing. It could be where the breeding range was this year. That's what the upcoming months are all about, is having people crunch the meteorological data, crunch the arrival. There's people who will come up with some really good ideas. We just don't have them yet because we're just busy digesting the trend. How many have seen a boy butterfly like the one on my name tag? This is where they're going to spend the winter. We call it overwintering. One thing that this public contact I do is it goes deep into the well of monarch experience, what it was like as a kid, what it was like once upon a time. We know that there's a few tucked in here. They're really hard to see. I just saw one. Did you? Wow, good spotty. I know monarchs are resilient. I know they bounce back. I know that they are survivors. They will find a way. Even though I just see a few right now, the fact that there are monarchs to the south, I see how excited those children are. I, I just can't help but feel like monarchs are gonna be one of the things that carry us through doing the really hard work that's ahead for climate change. They're gonna be one of those symbols that we're doing something.